Hi. Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Victoria and today I am joined by my lovely boyfriend, Christopher. Hello. If you aren't familiar with me or my channel, I am a 23 year old woman of transgender experience and I make mostly LGBT content here on YouTube if that's your thing. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so that you never miss out on a new upload. So I talk about him a lot. You guys know that I have a lovely longtime boyfriend of Christopher. We live together. Yes. And for a while, you've been asking me to make a video with him. And for a minute, I was like, do I really want to put my relationship on blast and, like on the internet? And then I remember that we have a video with like a couple million views with Truly on their Love Don't Judge series. So I feel like that ship has kind of sailed. But if you haven't already watched it, I'll link it right up here. And if you have not watched our reaction to our initial video, then I will also link that right up here. Pause this video, go watch it on back. But today I figured I would have Chris on my channel and I wanted to do a full Q&A because like I said, you guys have been asking for him to be on my channel for so long. So I figured you guys could submit on my Instagram all of your questions and you guys certainly pulled through. Before I jump into this video, I just want to say if you are new here, hi, welcome, how are you? Thank you so much for spending your time with me. While you're here, you might as well hit the subscribe button down below so that you'd never miss out on our new video every single Wednesday and follow all my social media in the description box down below so that you can participate in further Q and A's just like this one. And without any further ado, let's jump on to this week's video. Okay, question number one is, is dating a trans girl any different than dating a cis girl? No, but there is one specific thing that comes to mind and it's dysphoria. Because I feel like it, I've been in relationships with other people in the past, dysphoria was never really part of a thing. Like people would be anxious about the way they looked or something along those lines. But like dysphoria was the one thing that I had to like understand and learn to like be a partner with her in regards to that. But other than dysphoria, there's no, there's no difference. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't affect our daily lives in any way. Yeah, true. There you have it, folks. <laughs> what is your one household thing that your boyfriend really enjoys doing chore-wise? For example, my husband loves taking care of the yard and pool. I'm like, you do you. I feel like if we had a yard and pool, that would probably be his mm -hmm. thing. Um, I feel like you take out the trash a lot of the time. Like that's kind of your thing. It's not necessarily a chore, but like I helped build the apartment. So it's like- That is very true. That is like, it's not like something you think of a chore cause I'm not constantly painting the walls, but it's like I fixed up the whole apartment so that we had a space to live. So it's like kind of the different, in our relationship, it's kind of the difference between like me building things and her making sure it's clean and well taken care of. Like For I sure. make the apartment and then she makes it a home, if that makes sense. Oh, that's true. What do people say when they find out that you're trans? What do they say or tell you and your boyfriend? Um, most people don't find out that I'm trans unless like they follow me on social media. Um, if they do, I mean your family, which we'll touch on later on, but his family is very accepting. I think the only thing is that they start asking questions um, about my anatomy and about our relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Victoria passes really well. So like it doesn't, it doesn't actually like manifest itself in our life ever because no one ever assumes anything. Like you're very much so under the radar. So it never comes up. Like it only comes up with family really. How did Chris's family react when they found out that I was trans? I mean, I, like I was very open about it for context. Like I was very open about letting my family know about what was going on and the whole deal. He has I didn't, family member as well. So it's not like, it was like a completely conservative straight household. Yeah, my mother mentioned that. The, the wheels had already kind of been greased a little bit, um, but the family's been very supportive. The, the only thing that isn't like total acceptance is questions really, like we don't, we have, we've been lucky enough to not face any like adversity in the family, yeah. but I don't get harassed or like any, like my family's very accepting of it. And, and I'm very grateful for that, that they're open-minded enough for that. I mean, overall we have not run into any issues and I consider myself super lucky for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does your boyfriend understand your dysphoria, et cetera? Absolutely. And I think, you know, there's of course a learning curve because no one understands someone's innermost feelings right off the bat, but he mm -hmm. is always there for me and he understands that it's not just me being like, I feel ugly or I feel fat. Like those things, oh, they're necessarily bad things, but those are things that, you know, we all feel sometimes, but dysphoria is 
different and it's on a different level and it might not always be based in reality sometimes it's totally irrational um so he's always been really good at taking care of me when it comes to that and you know talking me through it if i'm feeling like i look awful in this outfit and i'm never gonna pass and i'm ugly and i look like a man and i'm whatever he can kind of help combat that he does a really good job yeah and i think like the key for me was just being open to learning and being able to kind of just listen to you and listen to like why and be like wait why do you feel that way or what is dysphoria and asking those questions early on it's more just like being a complimentary voice to what she has going on. Yeah. Do you want kids in the future? Mm -hmm. Absolutely we do. When is your anniversary? How long have y'all been together? Love y'all a mixed trans girl. Love you too. Um, we have been together a little over two years. Our anniversary is on May 25th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so two years going strong. We lived together for almost a year and a half. Like, <laughs> we moved in yeah. pretty fast and we've been doing really well. How have you adapted to large changes you need to trans relationships, surgeries, etc.? Mm. Um, so I had already, when I met him, had all of my surgeries that I planned on having. I might have a few more in the future, who knows? But um, I had met him when I had just gotten my gender confirmation surgery mm -hmm. and I was recovering when I first met him. So, you know, we actually, for the first few months, were not able to have sex. So that was definitely an obstacle that we faced because that was something we both weren't used to. Mm. And I actually think it helped us a lot. I think yeah. that kind of, that abstinence from the beginning. Although, not gonna lie, I'm sure it would have still gone great anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I but think, still, I know what yeah, you mean. I yeah, think, I think that really um, helped us get to know each other on a more personal level and kind of build that anticipation. And you've been by my side when I've gotten procedures since then, and he's always helped me. As your partner, like, I've had to just accept the fact that you're gonna have work done, and that's fine. Like, that's just part of it, you know? Yeah. That's, and like, if you if you think about like, like, I, I guess we didn't address this earlier, but like differences between like a normal relationship, like a normal relationship, and like being with somebody that's transgender to separate it, like procedures are definitely another part of that. Because there's definitely, like, there are things, like, dysphoria and procedures are combined together. Mm -hmm. And you, like, work on that actively. Like, that's something you're actively yeah. cultivating. You're cultivating your body that you see, you know. And so, like, that's definitely part of it, like, being accepting of the surgeries and being there for recovery. The same way someone, like, if they got their appendix removed, you'd be there for them. So, like, yeah. I treat it the same way of, like, it's a necessary thing. Like, it's just something that you have to do for yourself and I'm just there for you. I feel like, I don't know if this is just me, but I think it's probably universal on trans girls that we're always kind of planning the next surgery and thinking mm -hmm. about the next thing we're gonna have done. And even if we don't have it done, like he will listen to me talk about how I'm gonna get my nose done and my hairline done and my jaw and my chin and my whole new face and whatever. He'll listen to me talk about that even if he knows I'm not gonna go through with it. Like he knows that I just have to like get that out. Um, so yeah, he's, done really well he's always there to take care of me when I get things done and he's willing to be there for whatever future things I need um he knows that you know in the future because I have other cosmetic procedures that have been done some of them need to get replaced in time some of them need to be touched up and you know he's ready with me on the ride so I appreciate that how did he feel about you through all the stages of your transition in high school? I don't think he really felt any way about me because we didn't really know each other. We had similar friend mm -hmm. groups, um, but we weren't like besties or anything. So I don't think you had much of an opinion. I mean, I, I was kind of forced to have an opinion though in some contexts because like being trans at a high school is a big deal. Especially when you're transitioning. Yeah, we grew up in, like across the street was a farm. So like we were in the, not even in the across sticks. the street. Literally surrounding our high school was a turf yeah. farm. My um, elementary school was closed not once but twice in the time that I was attending there those yeah, four years because cows got into the school and ran rampant. So I was a kid in sports, and a lot of the times I don't want to make this stereotype, but a lot of the kids in sports were a little more closed-minded. Um, and so I would get a lot of situations where people would be saying things about Victoria, talking about her, saying things at her from a field, because she did get heckled and like harassed constantly. Um, so my, I wasn't necessarily like opinionated to where I was saying anything about it, but when people were either teasing her or calling out at her and they were on my team, 
um, I would say something about it. Victoria, how would you feel if a job kept you two apart temporarily? I feel like that just wouldn't happen, to be honest. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I'm Probably gonna travel won't. anywhere, and so is he. I think if one of us had an opportunity that took place for however amount of time in a different area, we would just get up and go. Um, if, I mean, you know, God forbid that something happens that we have to be apart for a couple months or something, like, that'd be fine. Like, our relationship can sustain it. Um, but I don't think there's any reason for that to ever happen, because we would just... Yeah. Go. I mean, if he has to go on a business trip for a couple of days or something, and I have to watch the kids eventually, like in the future, then that's different. We are partners, you know. We we do make adjustments for each other, and so I don't really see it being a possibility at all that we would go. You know, I have this assignment for two months. You'll stay here, right? I really yeah. do feel like um, we will bend for each other so that we'll be in the same place at the same time. I agree. How does he deal with negative stigmas? Do you deal with negative stigmas at all, really? Infrequently. Yeah. Infrequently. I mean, like, I've ne no one's bold enough to say anything to me, so I don't know. Like, typically... I, he's sitting down right now, but he is like a... He is a six-foot-tall man that does construction. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't... People don't usually pick not, fights. He's a pretty... He's a, he's a big guy. You're a pretty liberal person and like, I'm not, I'm not that visibly trans. So people that are in our lives are open-minded. Like, you know, if there's someone that is closed-minded and bigoted, then why would either of us have them in our lives in the first place? And the ones that are in our lives love us. So I feel like we don't really experience that. Maybe online, like on, yeah. you know, we have a TikTok that has like, five million views that has like I'm 20, sure a lot comments. of comments. It has so many views because it started a whole debate in the comments. And I think neither of us really care about that. I think at the end of the day, we're both adults. Um, we're not in high school. So if someone has something to say, they can say to our face or not at all. And no one says anything to our face. Um, Cause we're, we're a pretty tough couple. <laughs> What is your guys' song? Um, I don't know that we have a song. I think if I were to say anything, it'd probably be um, Banana Pancakes. Yeah. I feel like we have an album though. Like I feel like um, uh, Childish Gambino's- uh, Oh, oh um, Awaken My Love. Yeah, Awaken My Love. We have listened to that vinyl over and over and over again. That was one of the first records that we owned as a couple and it was amazing and it still is. It's a great record um, and we would listen to that non-stop. We would just vibe and like, we would get a little and we would just like sit and vibe and listen to the album and just talk for hours. This might be rated R, but what does it feel like for the two of you now that you have had GCS, which is general confirmation surgery, AKA bottom surgery? Um, I will say for me, I've talked about this in previous videos. If you haven't seen my many SRS videos, I'll link one right up here. Um, it feels amazing. I mean, for me personally, it feels great. It feels just the way that I always expected it to. And I have full sensation and full pleasure. Um, how does it feel as someone that has been with plenty of cis women for me? Yeah, it's no different. It's just, it's the same as if I was with somebody who was cis. Like it doesn't, it, it really hasn't changed anything. Yeah. So yeah, it's this, yeah, it's, I mean, great, but like, it's just, very much so normal, yeah. if that makes sense. Like it doesn't, it really hasn't changed anything. I think people expect it to be like some kind of weird science experiment or like feel super different or be like, I don't know, I don't know, like a Frankenstein kind of experience, but yeah. it's really nothing special. And by that, I mean, it's nothing that different. What does it say if someone questions slash challenges him on your validity as a woman? Nothing really, because people don't um, at all. Where would you like to travel someday? I personally have always wanted to go to Japan. I mm -hmm. was actually a Japanese major for two years at my college before they dropped the major. We've traveled along the East Coast, that's where we are now, but mm -hmm. we went to yeah. New Orleans together and that was amazing. I personally want to go and travel around Europe. It's always been an interest yeah. of mine. Um, and my ancestry, like at least the one that I'm connected to, goes back to Finland. Obviously. Um, yeah, right, with the blonde hair. The next couple questions are for my best friend, Jill. Um, went to high school with us. Is your boyfriend a natural blonde? Yes, he is a natural blonde. Mm -hmm. That's that finished gene. What types of dates do y'all like to go on? 
our favorite day is the breakfast date. Yeah, we like um, our breakfasts. We, we are not telling one. you where we go. We're not telling you where we go, but we get the same meal every oh, single time when we go there. I'll put a picture up right here. Yeah, we, we prefer the breakfast date. I really do feel like it's an underrated experience. Like waking up together, having coffee, going and getting food, starting your day on a good note. I mean, it's like it's a very special experience. My family always did brunches, so like for me, breakfast is like more important of a date or like more sentimental. It's comfy. What are some differences in hobbies and how do you overcome that? Well, Christopher loves music and he likes making music. I personally like visual art. I do things like makeup and um, YouTube and things like that. When he's doing his hobby, I'll do mine. Or when he's playing his game, I'll play my game. Um, you know, yeah. it's pretty balanced. And I think a big part of having a successful relationship is having differences so that you can do your own separate things and come back home and talk about that great experience that you had. Like he loves to rock climb, for example. Yeah. I Do I look like I rock climb? She does. We do have hobbies that we share, but it's important to have things that are different. Like no one is exactly the same. You go plant shopping. We do go plant shopping. Victoria's um, a plant mom. You know, if you, you haven't if you already along. seen my Instagram, there's some right plants. Here. There's a lot of plants. There's also a lot of ass. Zero so. to plants, zero to ass. <laughs> I did go zero to ass. Zero to ass, zero to plants. That's a plant milf right there. Um, what is something that your man does that makes you feel like the divine woman you are? <laughs> I love it. I would Should say I um, all sorts of stuff. I mean, like he'll get, we give each other back massages and stuff. Um, sometimes he'll kind of play with my hair. I really feel like a divine woman when he eats my food. What do our families think about our relationship? My family loves him for so many reasons. One, he's just a great guy in general. Two, they painted their kitchen. Yes, he did indeed paint their kitchen. <laughs> uh, two, I uh, have a little bit of a bad track record ah, when it comes to um, bringing complete dude bags into my parents' home. Uh, so I'm the nice one. Yeah, they're just I... <laughs> happy that I have a sweet person that is nice and loves me and keeps me reeled in. I keep her in check. My family loves her. I, I feel like my family is very weird um, and fun and intense. And like Victoria is also very fun, very down to spend time with the family. She's introverted, but like it took her not too long to get adjusted to my family. What was your best date? I don't know if we have a best date. I would say the one that comes to my mind right off the bat, this wasn't even really necessarily the best, but we were spending a lot of time together and we were gonna go clubbing and like neither of us really wanted to go, but we I both thought this. that the other one wanted to. So in my head, I was like, oh, he probably wants to go and like party and like, you know, dance and see his for our friends and stuff. And he was probably thinking the same thing and neither of us wanted to go. So we drove an hour up, yeah. got dinner before the club and we were like, We learned a lot about go. each other that night. I mean, yeah. and then he was like, I don't want to go either. And we were like, what the f So why are we going? We so we, we just didn't here? go. So we ate dinner and we walked around a little bit and we went home and that was great. And I think that's one of my favorite dates because I learned so much about the way that we interact together. It didn't take that much time before we just became very honest with each other. We're very honest. Hey. What things do you have in common? Interests, hobbies, food, music? She likes death metal. I can't listen to it. Like it makes my blood curdle in a negative way. I feel like for some people it makes their blood curdle in a positive way. They get hyped up by it. To me, like it makes me like, uncomfortable um but like otherwise we have similar stuff i feel like it's the same sort of thing where if i don't like a certain sort of food you adapt like recently we found out that i i'm sensitive to gluten and like she has adapted to that great yeah. she became obsessed with plants and so i have built shelves a lot of shelving <laughs> So many shelves, but like she really needed those shelves. So I made I, them, right? But like, I wouldn't have put them up otherwise, but we needed shelves. So like, she'll adapt to gluten stuff. I'll adapt I like gluten free to... because he built me shelves and pays for my grow lights. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the grow light so she gives me gluten free pasta. <laughs> How did you meet your boyfriend? We knew each other in high school. If you have not already seen our Love Don't Judge story on Truly, mm -hmm. like I said, I linked that at the beginning of the video. I'll also link it in the description box down below. But mm -hmm. we met in high school. We knew each other. We had similar friend groups. And then a couple years later, 
we met once while I was a waitress at a restaurant yep. and we actually, I waited on his table. It was a lot of and tension. he, after me kind of, you know, giving him the, the plates and being like, yeah, so like, can I get you anything else? Um, instead of just leaving his card at the table so I can go and pick it up like a normal waitress, he went up to the counter and he was like, yeah, here's my card. Anyway, like, how are you doing after high school? Like, you look great. Like, how are you doing? And I, we didn't end up connecting then, but then a year or two after that, we reconnected on Tinder. It's so crazy because I actually, I set my Tinder to be only women and we both had no idea we were going to be someone. But I had just gotten surgery and I was like, let me just... <laughs> open it to whoever, wherever, and just see what happens. And then we reconnected, and I'm so happy that we did. So, Tinder, if you want to sponsor us, hit me up. Hit us up. Yes. What astrological signs are you both? I am a Pisces. I'm an Aries. So, yeah. I am an emotional crybaby, and he is a tornado. Yep. What was the first thing he cooked you, and the first thing you cooked him? Um, The first meal I cooked you, I feel like was either this one pot pasta dish that I make a lot, or um, on New Year's I made that, we got this really freaking expensive cut of meat. I feel like that was, And yeah. um, I, first of all, tried to make baked potatoes, didn't work, um, they were sock rolled, but, but I made oh. meat and maybe asparagus or something, and I made that meat, ugh, Incredible. It was like, uh, for two people, it was like $90 for that cut of meat. It was a beef tenderloin cut, so yeah, it was yeah, extremely yeah. It was expensive. expensive. It was like $70. It, it was for New Year's, and I got some champagne, and I cut it up. It was, oh, amazing. From that moment on, he knew. He's like, I'm actually going to move in with her. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, so you have your bag in the car, right? How bad is the stigma behind trans people dating, and is your boyfriend bothered by it? Um, I don't give a rat's ass what anyone thinks of me. I have uh, always been weird. That is the sexiest thing I've ever heard in my life. I um, don't care. He doesn't give a fuck, which is so great. And he is so secure in himself and his masculinity that there, if there was any stigma that's placed on him, like, I'm you also not care. the type to care about my masculinity. Go ahead yeah. and call me gay behind my back. I don't give a. This I is don't a fucking care. alpha bitch. I, I actually think that for the most part, if anything, I make him look better. Um, and that's not to toot my own horn. Uh, but if the shoe but you're fits. Right. Y'all better wear She's it. She's right. <laughs> and lastly, the question that is going to finish us off, the dirty question to top all of them is, how was the first time after GCS or gender confirmation surgery? Was it painful for you? And what about him? So our first time together was my first time after having bottom surgery. I had gotten bottom surgery a couple weeks before I had met him and we had gone on our dates. So we had like a couple months where I had to be abstinent. I mean, you know, as abstinent as one can be. And so our first time was super, super emotional. We he's getting all anxious, but it was super Not emotional. Anxious. We <laughs> had like, it was a really great experience. It wasn't painful. If anything, it was a little bit scary for me in the moment because I didn't want to like get anything messed up, but it wasn't painful. If anything, yeah. it was just very affirming. It, yeah. it felt very like, this is how it was supposed to be. Was it painful or felt weird to you at no. all or yeah? Not in any way. It was very normal. I mean, was I also a little nervous that I was going to potentially hurt well, her? Yeah, I, like yeah, sure. You don't want to be but, a little careful. Yeah, you I had to be a little careful, but like it was it was like a sweet first time. It, it was great. Like it was very special. It was a great moment and like it was on a special day and like it was a big moment. Like it was it was just great. I also happened to be a cookout happening outside, so afterwards he went outside and he raw dog three hamburgers into just his ate mouth. Them. Just they were raw definitely patties. out too long, but just, just raw patties. Not yeah. raw, but like patties that okay, yeah. no buns. <laughs> no bun, no condiments. He only had enough of those buns, bitch. It, I got my fill of buns and I just yeah, wanted the patties. No, our so first time sense. was great and I'll never forget it. So all right, you guys, that was us answering your questions. Thank you so, so much for sending us all of your questions regarding our relationship. If you have any more, let me know, because I would love to do part two. Leave any of your questions that you have in the comments down below or send me a message on Instagram. If you are not already following me, what are you doing? I will link my Instagram and all of my social media in the description box down below. I am so much more active on there. 
So if you want to participate in further Q&As, lives, things like that, make sure you follow me on all of those places. If you are a young trans person out there and you are feeling like you will never be loved or you will never find a healthy relationship, I was always told that growing up. I felt that way growing up and I am so happy to have a healthy, loving relationship with this wonderful person. So. I hope that this art story inspires you in some way and lets you know that you are worthy of love and that love is everywhere. You just have to look for it. Be willing to wait for the right person. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I appreciate you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It helps out my channel so much. And if you are not already a part of this family, again, what are you doing? Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you can join the family. I make new videos every single Wednesday and a bonus one about once a month. In addition to my social media, I will link my Wizio in the description box mm -hmm. down below at wizio.com slash Victoria Rose. If you have any questions about transitioning, about dating, if you want a cameo from me or even a FaceTime call, for me, you can go to wisio.com slash Victoria Rose and get right in contact with me and I will respond to your questions. Those are always really special. Yeah. We have a great time filming those. You are all amazing and until I see you next Wednesday, good luck. I love you. Bye. See ya.